you are the person getting up every day to work, to, to fight for your dreams, to fight for your goals, to achieve everything that you want in life. If you don't take care of this person that is trying to achieve those things, how are you going to achieve those things? Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my YouTube channel. How are you? I hope you're doing great, great. If you're new, hi, welcome. It's been from my science closet. I am a biomedical scientist and a certified life coach currently doing a PhD on cancer research. And this channel is all about achieving your authentic, healthy dream life. In today's video, I want to talk deep about self-care because I feel there are a lot of people out there that don't really know what this means and how important and how beneficial it can actually be for your life. So self-care is not just having a bubble bath and putting on a beauty face mask. Self-care is what the name implies. It means taking care of yourself. You are responsible for your mental health, for your physical health, for your emotional health and to keep them in a balance. Normally when you say self-care, I feel like people understand that it is a luxury that you're going to a spa or you're going to retreat or you're going to be drinking like fancy juices, you're going to get a massage. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that and this can totally help you, but it's not the actual meaning of self-care. The scientific definition of self-care is the set of activities in which one engages throughout life on a daily basis and these activities are meant to to promote optimal health to prevent illnesses to detect symptoms early and to manage chronic disease and these activities are normally added in your life as habits as part of your daily routine to promote your overall health so for example if we start with mental health mental health self-care influences your psychological well-being. Mental health self-care is just taking care of your mind, making sure that your mind is staying healthy. For example, if you go through stress and anxiety, which means your mind is not healthy, you start having other health problems, like your sleep gets affected, the way you eat gets affected, the way you think gets affected, the way you behave gets affected, the way that you feel gets affected, the way you treat yourself. So you see why having a healthy mind is very, very important. So the activities that you can do for your mental health um, as part of your daily routine is limit social media and news. Sometimes this can have a negative impact on our mental health. You can practice meditation, you can practice breathing techniques, you can spend time outside in nature, you can read a book. Also, the way you dress can also affect the way we're feeling that day. Make sure you have some technology free time. You can do gardening, you can cook, you can paint. Just make sure there's this time of the day that you're spending time doing something that brings you joy. Also, environmental health is something that is very, very connected to our mental health and I think people are not really aware about this. This is something that I have mentioned in my previous videos and your home. Your home is your environment and the way you have your home is going to affect your mental health and just the way that you're going to be feeling. If you are surrounded of a messy and disorganized environment, that is the way that you're going to feel. Your focus can get altered, your efficiency and productivity can get altered, you can suffer from anxiety, you can suffer from stress, just your positive energy overall is going to decrease if you have that surrounding. And not only with your home, but it's the same with people. If you're surrounded by toxic and negative people, this is the way that you are going to be feeling rather than if you're surrounded by good and positive and supporting people. Just remember that we humans are very easily influenced. Also, another thing to take into account regarding the environmental health is to do grounding, and this is something that helps so much. Doing grounding is um, walking on your barefoot on the outside. So that means the sole of your feet connecting directly with the surface of the earth, whether it is in a mountain or at the beach with the sand. Doing grounding has been proven to decrease anxiety, to 
decrease stress and it helps to boost energy. And of course other things to take into account regarding the environmental health is the toxic products that you use, your carbon footprint, just what we can change in order to reduce our contamination to our beautiful earth. Now regarding emotional and spiritual health, this refers to the aspect of our well-being that organizes our values, our relationships with family, with friends, and this would be also called social health. It refers to our meaning and purpose of our lives, and it refers to our feelings and our emotions. There is a very strong connection between physical health and emotional health. To take care of your emotional health, you can practice visualization for goal setting, to increase your motivation, to keep you on the right track. Again, <laughs> you can practice meditation and also you can practice yoga. Practicing meditation and yoga not only help uh, to get rid of your stress, to get rid of um, anxiety, uh, there's also meditation and yoga to improve in this, uh, the quality of your sleep, but meditation and yoga are known for positively impacting our hormones and our neurotransmitters. They help with our gut health, with our digestion, and so much more. In order to take care of your social health, what you can do is get involved with your family and your friend and have social experiences. So for instance, have face-to-face -face interactions. This is something that is going to help you reinforce those connections that you have with them. And talking to them, to those uh, people that you love, um, not only is going to make you feel better, but talking to them about your feelings and about situations that you're going through life is going to give you their perspective and probably a solution uh, that you have right in front of you that at that moment you don't see. So as you can see, everything is very connected. You can practice some act of kindness. This will help you promote a healthy aging, boost your mood, as well as helping others. And then finally for physical health, which will not only benefit your body but your mind too, what you can do is eat a well-balanced diet. And for this I would suggest just pick the best diet for you. And if you find a diet that you like but then maybe you would change something because you don't like it, just do it. You have to feel comfortable and happy with the diet that you are having. For me, it does not make any sense that you make a very strict diet unless you have like this uh, health or disease, right? Um, but it doesn't make any sense to me for you to make a very strict diet for just one objective that you have in mind and then be sad and miserable about it. So uh, you only have one life and you need to live it to your fullest and to your best and be happy. So why are you going to do a diet that is not going to make you happy? So for example, say that you want to be very fit and you uh, want to be healthy, so there's this diet that you want to do, but then from time to time you just want to eat pizza or, I don't know, have a treat, have an ice cream. Well, you can do that cheat. Pick a day that you will do your cheating and you will treat yourself and that's it. And I say this because remember we want to have a balanced overall well-being. As I mentioned before, uh, you have your mental health, your physical health and your emotional health. If, if one of this health is going wrong, then everything is just going to get unbalanced. And as I mentioned before, if you have a diet that is very strict and you don't like it, you are going to end up being sad and that is your mental health. The next thing you can do to improve your physical health is daily exercise. And if you're the kind of person that loves doing exercise or that is very active, good for you. But some of you don't really like doing exercise and don't really like the feeling after it, which is feeling exhausted. Well, in that case, I suggest you to take long walks and that's it. Just make sure that you're getting your body moving and that you are not having a sedentary life. So you can jog, you can walk, you can swim, you can bike, you can do yoga, you can do pilates. Just choose your sport, choose your exercise. Again, just choose something that you're going to be happy and comfortable doing. And when I say comfortable, it doesn't mean that the exercise or the training that you choose is going to be easy. It's just that 
even though it's hard, it's worth it and you like it and you're liking the outcome. And also another thing that you can do is have natural supplements such as vitamins, such as probiotics. This is going to improve your immune system, your digestive health, your mental health. And lastly, the last thing that you can do uh, regarding your physical health, uh, which of course also affects your mental health, is to make sure that you sleep the right amount of hours that you need. Remember with sleep, not only quantity is important, but also quality. If you have been sleeping for eight hours, but you have been waking up every 30 minutes during the night, you're going to feel very tired. Having the incorrect sleep cycle can lead to depression, it can increase weight gain, can increase inflammation, and it can decrease attention spam. You probably have noticed this whenever you sleep in a bad way, the next day you are not productive, you're not efficient, you cannot concentrate you're just feeling very tired and you just want to be in bed the entire day. So the reason why I made this video is for you to understand how important it is to self-care every day, to take care of yourself every day. You are the person getting up every day to work, to, to fight for your dreams, to fight for your goals, to achieve everything that you want in life. If you don't take care of this person that is trying to achieve those things, how are you going to achieve those things? When life gets stressful, anxious, when you worry, when you get nervous, when you just feel that there is chaos all around you, it is very easy to forget about self-care. It is very, very easy to just kind of like get lost in that stress and anxiety. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Just take a moment, if that is happening right now, to stop and to breathe. Just take a moment to think and see how you can put a solution to whatever it is that you're going through right now if it is something bad. Remember, self-care is not a one-time massage, it's not a one-time retreat. It does help, but it's not that. It involves taking care of yourself every day. And the best way to do this is just creating habits that you like, that brings you joy and that gets you distressed and connected with yourself. You can do a checklist in order not to forget or create your habit tracker. Whatever it is that is easier for you. Anyway guys, uh, this is the end of the video. I really hope you liked it. I really hope this brought you value and inspiration and motivation to take care and to love yourself because it's so, so important. And if you have any comments or if you think there's anything that I did not mention, please leave it down below in the comment. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that bell button to to get notified of my new videos. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week and I'll see you next video. Mwah.